Hey everyone, my name is Mitch Jorgensen, and I'm a second class, or junior, at the United States Naval Academy. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, and I attended Madison West High School, where I was a swimmer all four years. I also went to UW-Madison for a year for the Academy, so obviously I'm a Badger fan. I came to the Naval Academy because I want to serve my country and receive an exceptional education. I'm majoring in mechanical engineering, which combines math, engineering, material science, to design, create, and maintain mechanical systems. This means anything from engines to elevators to factory machines. So one of the coolest things that I do at the academy is that I'm on the parachute team. The parachute team allows midshipmen like myself to perform demonstration skydives and even compete against various other universities across the country. In the video at the right, you can see me skydiving in free fall which is when you leap from a plane and have nothing to slow you down until you reach terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is essentially the fastest that an object can go as it falls, and occurs when the drag force acting upwards on a body is equal to the force of gravity acting downwards on a body. These forces cancel each other out and leave the object with zero acceleration. For a skydiver, terminal velocity is generally around 120 miles an hour but can be a lot faster if you're flying in a head down position. So in this next video, you can see me skydiving under canopy, which is when you have a parachute open to slow you down. This particular kind of parachute is called a ram air parachute and has similar characteristics to an airplane, which makes it very maneuverable. Parachutes come in all sorts of different shapes, sizes, and designs, depending on what they're to be used for. Today, I'm gonna to lead you through an activity where you can test this for yourself. So for this activity, you'll need some string or yarn, a paper clip, scissors, and various types of sheet material. I would recommend using coffee filters, wax paper, and even aluminum foil. Your challenge is to design a parachute out of these materials, predict its rate of descent, test your prediction, and then modify your design to be even better. So for my parachute, I just used some yarn, a circular piece of paper, and a couple of paper clips. Put the yarn through one of the holes, tie a single knot here, do the same thing on the other side. the paper clips and there you have a parachute now it's time to do a little math and predict how fast this parachute will fall the longer the time it takes the more it will be able to slow down and the safer it will be on the slide here are the four main equations we will be using first you need to weigh your parachute and this will give you the mass m in kilograms using your number for m and the acceleration of gravity A, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Plug these into the equation F equals M times A to solve for the force of gravity, or Fg. Now, like I said earlier, when the force of gravity is equal to the force of drag, you will not accelerate any faster. And this is what we want. That means that Fg, which we just found, equals the drag force, Fd. The next thing we need to measure is the area of your parachute. If your parachute is a rectangle, this means measuring the length and multiplying by the width. If your parachute is a circle, that means measuring the radius and using the equation area equals pi times r squared. Using a, fd, and the constants for rho and cd, we can solve for the velocity v. Rho represents the air density, which should be about 1.22 kilograms per cubic meter and CD represents the coefficient of drag. For a person, CD is usually between 1.0 and 1.4. So in this case, we'll use 1.2. Plug all these numbers into the equation FD equals one half times rho times V squared times A times CD to solve for the velocity V in meters per second. We're almost there. Now that we've got the velocity, we can calculate how much time it will take to fall a specific distance using the equation speed equals distance divided by time. If we plug in our V for speed, 
and a distance of 2 meters, how long will your parachute take to fall? This is going to be your prediction. And now, since we're done with the math, it's time to test. Hold your parachute up 2 meters high and drop it. Test it a few times and be sure to record the amount of time it takes to fall. How close was your prediction? Engineering design is all about making things the best that they can be. So in this case, how could you make your parachute even better? Try using different materials for the parachute or a different shape. What sort of effects do these have? What other parameters could you change? You can use the chart on this slide to fill in your test results for your different parachute designs. Today we learned a little about parachutes. We learned what they do, why they're designed the way that they are, and how to calculate how well they may work. This is all very important if you're a skydiver like me. I want a parachute that'll slow me down as much as possible so that I land on the ground gently. And this is one of the things that I can do at the Naval Academy. Whatever you're interested in, be it math or skydiving, the Academy has programs to accommodate that. I'm so glad to have come to the Academy for all the amazing experiences it's offered me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little about parachutes. Thanks everyone.